من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فاتي الله في رسول أول الأمر منكم and always a reminder for myself and abdukul ajeezu da'eefu miskeen wa zalim wa jahal and but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence and we took a path in which to be nothing and the only thing that is correct is Allah and Sayyidina Muhammad and Holy Qur'an. Everything else is filled with mistakes and based on the intention Allah will judge His creation. If the intention was good and mistakes were made and made, then alhamdulillah Allah got full raheem. There is no one that's perfect and without mistakes. So always in our life that's is a given that it's not being written in stone and these are teachings that come from the heart and the intention is the love of Sayyidina Muhammad if anyone find anything wrong in it then that's for them but judgment for Allah only and that judgment is based on intention. Last night we went into the… did the Quraysh… No. can you hear me? Yes sir. We went into the 11 principles of Naqshbandiya and like anything else Imadadakum Ya Masha Naqshbandiya Fard al-Adam Ya Fard al-Arsh that it's not that you pick up the principle and begin start doing the practices. The principles are oceans of reality and requires the guidance that at each step the shaykhs must teach all the curriculum so that the student can enter into that principle. So when they're not teaching it there's no way for students to achieve it. And this is for Naqshbandiyatul Aliya. So we said and reminder now, Kush dar dam, conscious breathing. So you can't just pick up that principle and say, okay I'm going to be consciously breathing. The shaykh has to have taught you to sit, be conscious of your breath, understand now the haqqaiq of the breath what we talked about last night that the breath and the secret of the, the force of life from the ha of Allah or some people in other subcontinents say he, it has a who and that who is the secret power of every existence. That's what makes the breath the energy for creation and awliyaullah want us to harness that. If that precious gift is being sent out, we must be conscious of that breath to catch it. And one whom is not conscious of it is heedless. So then the student had to have been taught the power of the breath, realities of the breath, importance of that zikr of who and all its haqqaiqs. Then they sit and begin to train on how to breathe. Nazar bar qadam is to keep your focus upon your step and your path. So it's not you pick up and say, oh my gosh I should just keep watching my feet everywhere I walk. It was that a shaykh had to have taught you the fact that nobody is teaching anything and then they just make comments that they don't like this, they don't like that because now the time of immense jealousy. And this is what killed Imam Hussain this is what killed most of the Ahlul Bayt. Because of the light they carry and because of whatever Allah want to bestow upon them, they found that to be very threatening. And they said, as long as you're on earth the people won't come to us, they'll be attracted to you. So if we kill you then they'll be sitting with us. And this is a, a jealousy of people. Instead of the goal being to reach to the reality, goals are different 
for each person and that which they don't understand and they have very little knowledge of become angered by it. So that's why of course it's not perfect, nobody's claiming this is a Qur'an and that we are prophets of Allah, we're just donkeys of awliyaullah. And there may be many imperfections but the intention was the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and pious people they are mahfuz, Allah guards them, corrects it and fixes it. And the madad of awliyaullah come to inspire them any correction that is required within it. So it means that this, these principles are the course guide. So then the shaykhs of Naqshbandiyyatul Aliyah should be teaching these courses so that the student can adhere to the principles laid by Naqshbandiyya and Mawlana Shah Naqshban Fardul Alam wa Shahikun. So nazar bal qadam and the nazar they even go deeper that it's not the eyes of your physical but the eye of your heart. That to, to be vigilant of your heart that continuously monitoring that what I'm going to do and, and what I'm going to do in my life is this a part of my path or this is a distraction from my path. And when time is short in these days and in these, these times of difficulty it's even much stronger now. Every choice you're about to make, if you email us you're going to get the answer most likely you want to hear because nobody's at the level to get an answer in which they need to hear. They actually become angered when, when you give them an answer that they needed to hear. So when you're asking, ask yourself the choice you're about to make, is that for your path? You're going to be drawing closer to the Divine, closer to the prophetic reality, closer to the, the reality of awliya and shaykhs and guides. And that's what nazar means that I'm watching my feet and it looks like my feet are taking me away. But what is coming into your heart is what's really pulling you and that's the secret. You know that by shaitan more than by Rahman because shaitan's more prevalent. So when he puts out Instagram, he's taking your nazar and pulling you into a direction. And he knows that what you're looking at is going to be pulling you, come, come like the Pied Piper, come this way. And before you know it all your desires are not towards the Divine, the Presence. So that's why the Divinely Presence is inside the heart when you keep meditating that the choices I'm making is, is this going into my heart? Now he made it faster and he put out his TikTok and these children are, are going completely wild. They can't control anything that they're seeing, their desires, their understandings because it's coming so much into them, pulling them into a direction and that's nazar baqadam. And then shaitan uses it for dunya in the book called The Secret, wish for a parking space and it appears. You're using your spiritual power for a parking space and for material world where you should be putting your nazar upon your heart and to reach your Lord's Divinely pleasure and that keep me in the company of those whom you have favoured from Nabiyeen, Siddiqeen, Shuhadahi wa Salihin. If in your life you're keeping the presence of that, do you feel the love and you're being taught about the love of the Nabeen and Sayyidina Muhammad Sultan of all the Prophets? Have you been taught about the love of all the Prophets? Have you been taught about the holiness and the greatness of the Holy Companions in relation to your spirituality? Not physical stories, this companion he went to get water, then this companion he went on the camel. But what is their spiritual reality? What's their fires and nazar upon you to raise you? And salihin, shuhadahi wa salihin, if you're being taught from these then you're being taught from the reality of the Kaaba and that you've been taught about the realities of Allah because Allah is with them. If you're being taught about them, Allah's with them. So you're being prepared for this step. So that when the shaykh is teaching you nazar you understand 
you understand how to connect your heart, you understand how to make a hisab every night. So these are not just the 11 things that you keep reading and think you can do it on your own. There must have been a curriculum being taught and then you can go back and when you read each principle you can say, oh that's why the shaykh taught that. He taught that you should be making tafakkur, you should be vigilant of your heart, you should make a hisab on your heart and accounting of your heart. Then of course you'll have a nazar and you'll understand what your heart, why is it fluctuating? Why is it going this direction versus going towards Allah Safar dar watan, his journey to the homeland. Do you feel that you are from paradise and that it's your responsibility to go back? Do you feel that you're of a spiritual nature sent for a physical experience? We're spiritual beings and we've been sent to this earth for a physical experience and to see are we going to lose ourselves? And you have to use this body that Allah gave to us to go back in and not out, go inside, go for the inner reality, the inner Kaaba, sanctify the inner presence and the inner realities that Allah has dressed and blessed us upon. Only through that training then khalwat dar anjuman, you have to have been taught how to meditate, how to contemplate, how to keep your consciousness of your heart so that you can be in a seclusion amongst people, that you can keep the presence of your madad while talking to people, you can keep the presence of the, the madad and the fires of the shaykh while working, keep the madad and the presence while everything that you're doing so that your heart does not become distracted. And that you're, you're vigilant over your heart, you feel the sensitivity of your heart. We've talked before that you step into somewhere and you feel the energy is not correct and that you're not safe or your family is not safe. You should be vigilant of that. Not that oh something happened and I, yeah I kind of stepped in the wrong way and all of a sudden I found myself deeper into the problem, that wasn't the training. Your training was to be sensitive to everything. Be sensitive to your environment, everywhere you step you should have known completely the environment of where you are. And as a result you have to keep the connection with your heart at all times so that if the signal comes you're in a dangerous place, get out, follow the signal. The more you follow that signal the more you're attuned into that signal. So you should have been taught those for you to understand what is this safar dar watan and the journey inside. Khalwat al-anjuman how to be secluded amongst the self and now Yad Qad with essential remembrance, Yad Kad that Yad Iman Kad that he remembered me. Yad Kad is the essential remembrance and in this state from Mawlana Shaykh's articles on Mawlana Shah Naqshaban, the state is achieved through reciting every day the zikr of negation, La ilaha illallah. And that that zikr of La ilaha illallah to negate and to make the servant to reach a station of death. Without this teaching if you think that you can just open up and say, La illallah, La illallah, La illallah, nothing going to happen for you. This is an understanding of why many people become confused because the later states are going to talk about the state of being in the love and in the dhikr of Allah But if you're going to that state with you, you achieve nothing. So that's why all the teaching was, you don't exist, you are supposed to negate yourself. I'm nothing, I don't exist Ya Rabbi. The shaykh at that time was to have taught you, of course you don't exist. All that's important is the love of Sayyidina Muhammad 
because there's only La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah From this level on if you didn't understand that these principles not going to open anything for you. So this is not something he gave for everyone just you go take it and go. You must have been sitting with some real Naqshbandi shaykhs to have sat and taught you through the curriculum of all their books, all their websites and all their videos. So then at this level Yad Kard that they remembered. They remembered what? That you didn't, un you didn't exist and you negated yourself, you were the drop all your life thinking your drop is so powerful, so important, who you are, what you're going to get, what you're going to buy, what your status is. But the shaykh should have taught you that no your drop throw it back in the ocean. When it goes back into the ocean, it goes back into the ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah Means that when you're doing your muraqabah, doing all the meditations, asking to be dressed that I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing, seeing myself as nothing, that I'm asking to be in the dress of my shaykh, the fana of my shaykh. My shaykh is, is the Muhammadan light, I'm keeping that, keeping my manners, keeping my character. As a result I'm becoming Muhammadiyoon. As a Muhammadiyoon when you begin to make La ilaha illallah it's real, La ilaha illallah because you are in the ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah. But if you're not in the ocean don't understand anything about Muhammadun Rasulullah what's the benefit of you keep saying La ilaha illallah? Because then it's you, La ilaha illallah no John something, no. The true power of that reality, the true essence of what the shaykhs are trying to open for us, Yadkad. That he remembered, he remembered one that he's nothing and then he remembered the ocean in which he came from and that he was taught and he was firm in his understanding. I'm nothing, anta subhanika inni kuntum min al-dhalimeen, glory be to you Ya Rabbi and that I'm an oppressor to myself, I'm nothing, nothing, nothing. I'm not here to try to find something about myself, I'm here to reach your Divinely Presence. And as a result Allah pushes then that you should find about my beloved Presence, the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad So then the shaykh should be teaching the Muhammadan haqqaiqs, the Muhammadan realities, Nurul Anwar wa Sirat al Asrar, the source of every secret and the secret of every light is Muhammadun Rasulullah. When you're dressed with that, Yadkar, then they begin to teach you, make your zikr of La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah. And they sit and in their dress of their muraqabah, dress of the Muhammadan light that they're nothing and they want the reality within the Muhammadan heart of La ilaha illallah at every La ilaha illallah is as if they cracking and shaking everything. They can reach a station of death by the dhikr of La ilaha illallah. And they can resuscitate themselves with Muhammadun Rasulullah. Everything perishes and negates, and what come back into existence by the power of Muhammadun Rasulullah. So, means they can't go deeper into that reality unless they've been taught. Because from this point on is all has to be in the dress of Muhammadun Rasulullah Then Baz Gasht, principle six, Baz Gasht. This is a state in which the seeker who makes the zikr of negation and affirmation 
comes to the understanding of Sayyidina Muhammad Illahi anta maqsudi wa ridat matloob. Illahi anta maqsudi wa ridat matloob. My Lord that You are my aim and Your good pleasure and satisfaction is what I am seeking. And that they recite the phrase to increase the seeker's awareness of the oneness of Allah until he reaches a state of existence of all creation vanishes from his eyes. Then into the oceans of fana. They recite this zikr in order to extract from their heart the secrets of oneness and open themselves to the reality of the unique oneness and Divinely Presence. Whoever imitates a group of people will belong to them from Sayyidina Muhammad saying, and whoever imitates his teacher will someday find his secret open in his heart. The meaning of Bazgash is to return back to Allah Almighty and exalted. It's a complete surrender and submissioning to His will. And its reality that is one you're reciting, Illahi anta maqsudi, Illahi, Illahi. This has to do with that you don't exist, and the Illahi and the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad's Divinely Light. Illahi anta maqsudi wa ridat madloob that I'm nothing, I'm nothing and seeking your pleasure, asking your forgiveness and seeking your pleasure. And to annihilate oneself into the oceans of nothingness and that the witnessing into the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad because your miraj to Allah is inside of the Muhammadan haqqaiq. That when your light is entering into that Bazgash is that you're entering into the light, into the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad's heart and Divinely heart. Illahi anta maqsudi. At one level, you're asking Prophet's light that I'm asking forgiveness, his illahiyat. Illahi anta maqsudi wa ridat matloob. Mm. Because you don't exist to be talking to Allah You're entering into the Muhammadan heart and your, your understanding now and you should have been taught all your istighfar was for Prophet And that way at that, at that reality of entering into the Muhammadan heart Allah of Kareem jawka wa astaghfirullah wa astaghfirukum rasul. That's the jawka. That your heart, your light is entering into the Muhammadan heart and that Allah is saying that, that you are oppressed yourself that your light run to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad It understands that this Muhammadan light that was given to me. Allah you're asking istighfar but you're the one whom is, is harming is Sayyidina Muhammad if we've taken the Muhammadan light, when we're doing something bad, we're doing it bad to the light of Sayyidina Muhammad So we have no attachment to Allah Allah is not connected to His creation. Why you're asking Allah's forgiveness? Because Allah loves Sayyidina Muhammad So I gave this as a trust to you. But the reality of the istighfar is that we're asking Prophet for forgiveness, Sayyidina Rasul Kareem forgive me. Forgive me for I'm doing bad and what I do of guna, what I do of incorrectness that this light it's not meeting where it's supposed to. The frequency of my bad sayyata amalina of the bad deeds of my action, the sins of my actions change the frequency of my light to attach into your reality. And so with the istighfar and this praisings, anta maqsudi wa ridat madloob. That I'm begging your forgiveness and asking for your ridan satisfaction. That forgive me 
if Prophet forgives that life, forgives that servant and ask Allah that forgive them for my sake, the frequency of that light is entering into a fana. Means we're taking our frequency to attune ourselves to the light of Sayyidina Muhammad not to the darajah that can never be achieved. But it's like you're going through a door, if, you're, if your frequency is off and the sins are high and the character is bad, it can't reach to that reality. And so then all of its training is to clean, is continuously asking Prophet for forgiveness, forgive me, forgive me. <laughs> that's why, that's why then they write it then asking Allah. Because if you are in a Muhammadan light then what exists is only Allah. But if you are in no John trying to reach Allah then where was Muhammadun Rasulullah? It became three like a partner. But when Nojan doesn't exist and Nojan is in the Muhammadan light then that's why when the shaykhs are teaching from these levels on is asking Allah, Allah, Allah because they are in the Muhammadan haqqaiq, they are in the ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah. So no doubt everything is La ilaha illallah and they witness from the heart of Prophet and in their Muhammadan dress, Ilai anta maqsudi wa ridat madloob, asking Allah in their Muhammadan dress. If the student not taught that then they believe that they are communicating with Allah and it's Allah and them and they forgot and never were even taught the realities of Sayyidina Muhammad And that's why many people get confused from the teachings. So why are you all talking about Prophet and not talking about Allah So now Allah is going to come but He wants us to understand that to enter into these realities and these marifah, these oceans of, of uniqueness and oneness, Allah is not accepting anything but Muhammadun Rasulullah and if you're, if you are moving in the ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah then you make istighfar, you cleanse, you purify with the best of character, best of actions and that purity is now moving. And in that Muhammadan haqqaiq Prophet allows the light to enter into his Divinely heart. Can you imagine that your soul's light entering into the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad Wallah describes Muqarrabeen. They are a level of angels, they circumambulate the Divine Throne. Where is the Divine Throne of Allah It's on the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad The Muqarribiyoon they are just circumambulating and praising the reality of what they see of Allah because they are all Muhammadiyoon. So we can see that without that curriculum none of this would have made sense and I think we've met a few other Naqshbandis they, they think that they're doing that Allah, Allah, Allah but they were taught nothing about Muhammadun Rasulullah And this is all deep realities of the Muhammadan haqqaiq. So then to remember we're in the ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah in the Muhammadan dress asking Allah forgiveness, asking Prophet's forgiveness. Then nigahidasht, the seventh principle in the Muhammadan dress, in the oceans of fana, in the oceans of muraqaba, nigah is sight. Then it means that the seeker must watch his heart and safeguard it by preventing bad thoughts from entering. The bad inclination keeping the heart from joining the Divine. Why? Because if you are in the dress of Muhammadun Rasulullah anything wrong takes the light out. 
truth and falsehood they don't match. So means that to keep the soul's purity to enter in because where is going to be the station of witnessing? Is in the qalb of Muhammadun Rasulullah The man's in the Qur'an where the Qur'an is emanating is the ocean of power. So the soul is in a mirage into that reality. The more purity the soul the more access it has to the Muhammadan heart. When it loses its purity then as if like a magnetic push it pushed down to a different and a lower level. So the La Yanta Maqsudi is a continuous cleansing, La ilaha illallah is the affirmation, I don't exist, all that exists is Allah Muhammadun Rasulullah, it's the complete reality of oceans of tawheed. So when the usul when they say, oh the first usul is La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah and the ocean of tawheed that nothing exists but Allah and the only creation is Muhammadun Rasulullah. This is the highest level of tawheed and everyone else is thinking that they exist, Muhammadun Rasulullah exists and Allah is the creator. That's no longer oneness, that's multiple. So means this is the depth of the ocean of Naqshbandiya realities. The witnessing of that reality that they continuously vigilant over themselves, their heart, their actions and their character. That to keep the frequency of their character, to keep the frequency of their nature, to be into that proximity in the reality of the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad That's why they don't argue, they don't fight, they don't debate. Because if they were to witness their heart and these arguments, these debates, these, these types of energies it creates a darkness within their heart. As a result their soul will be expelled from the reality of where it is just by virtue of its agitation and cleanliness. These realities of light and frequency are sensitive. The frequency in which the light is emanating and the cleanliness of the light, it's granting its proximity. Any agitation in the character, in the, in, in the demeanor of that light, what happens? It shoots that light again down to a different reality. And that's why then they're always making istighfar, always crying, always asking for forgiveness. So that that tawbah to clean their reality and bring their light back into the association of the qalb al-Muhammadiyyah and that diwan and in that association to receive those emanations. And that's when the holy hadith begins to give its depth of its reality. At nigah al-dash Prophet describing who knows himself will know his Lord because that nigah that they took a whole life of continuously knowing themselves. All of the essences of these holy hadiths are deep within these principles of marifah. That to look at that reality then that's the opening of that holy hadith, who knows himself, who arafa nafsahu, arafa rabbahu that understood clearly his nafs and all his lower desires, obliterated those and then continuously watching the nafs from any sort of frequency or, or intrusion. Like a terror group intruding within their being, shaitans are coming in to intrude, continuously vigilant over that to wash, to cleanse and to kick out and as a result he begins to know his Lord. He's in the ocean of that. That Lord is Sayyidina Muhammad We described before, Rabb, lordliness, house of lords. And to, to witness the Lord Most High, it's in the heart of the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad So that not to witness Allah outside of that reality, it doesn't exist. But to enter into the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah inside the heart of that reality to witness Allah's oneness and to witness Allah's uniqueness. This now opening into the oceans, when they enter into the oceans of 
Wah, Wahdaniya and they entered into the oceans of Al Wahid. That one whom is unique in Allah's creation is the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad There's no soul like that, there's no angel like that because they're all from Muhammadun Rasulullah. Every angel is made from that light, every paradise is made from that light, the throne is made from that light. This is all ocean of one. But if they enter into the heart and into the reality where the Qur'an is emanating, this is the oceans of al ahadiyya and the unique oneness of Allah Where do we see that on the Kaaba? So there's a spiritual hajj and there's a physical hajj. The concept of the physical hajj is that all you people with all your clothes and all your cars and all your jewelry and all your wealth and all your poverty, Allah makes a calling. And that's why we come in, labbaik, Allahumma labbaik, from all over this earth they enter into now the holy precincts where there's a symbol of oneness which is the symbol of the Divine Heart. It's all symbolic, the Kaaba represents a heart. From wherever you are and you're going to begin to enter into these precincts you have to shower, wash and put your white robe. Because Allah doesn't care for your status, doesn't care for your wealth, your wealth won't get you anything here. Your status will cause you even more problems in Allah's presence. So you see this collapsing and crushing like what we're talking of doing in Marifa and the way of Sufism through your life's training, Allah's doing it in one moment in the Hajj. So they take off all those clothes, they shower and then you go into an area that you have to put your, your ihram, your white outfit. And then from all this multiplicity they start to become into the oceans of singularity. And you see them entering into now the Kaaba which is representing the one heart and they all come in white. So what happens now? That is the ocean of Wahdaniyya. So Allah says, I'll show you on the horizon and then you'll see within yourself. So Allah's showing for those whom are observing from out, you see how they're all different? I'm going to bring them into the oneness of Muhammadun Rasulullah. And all of a sudden they all come in white and you can't distinguish anymore what were multiple people. Then Allah begin to circumambulate them because that's their path, their tariq. A life of continuous tawaf and, and circumambulating that which you believe before you see this group becoming crushed. Wahid al qahar. Allah brings them in through the Sifat al-Wahid with Sifat al-Qahar begin to crush them so that they're not all spread out but they're crushed into one circle circumambulating the center which is a heart. The spiritual Hajj they see themselves in that tawaf. They see themselves being crushed their physicality and Allah send their soul through Hajj al-Aswad and they see themselves in their tawaf, they were crushed in their tawaf and pushed through Hajj al-Aswad in which they entered into the oceans of unique oneness of Allah So Wahid they came to oneness. Qahar Allah began crushing them, that's why the hajj is crushing. It's not meant to be comfortable and spread out, it's meant to be symbolic. Your path is to crush you into one, you move as one because you're in an ocean of oneness, symbolic ocean of Divine oneness. And as a result you'll be crushed, crushed, crushed and when Allah determines sincerity He'll shoot your soul through al Hajj al Aswad into the Divinely reality, into that ocean of realities. 
We pray that Allah give us more and more understanding and the physical hajj, what is the symbolism of a spiritual hajj and the realities of these principles of awliyaullah which they laid for us of these immense realities. And that these principles and the reason to go over these principles, this is the dalil that this teaching should have been taking place. Otherwise none of the Naqshbandi principles for Naqshbandis makes any sense if they weren't taught about the haqqaiqs of oneness, the haqqaiqs of Sayyidina Muhammad the haqqaiqs of marifah and tafakkur and contemplation. That's why these secrets are all for Mawlana Shah Naqshaban and every, in every, and every moment there are 124,000 awliyaullah and out of 124,000 awliyaullah there are 7,007 that are Naqshbandi awliya. And from those 7,007 upon this earth Mawlana Shah Naqshaban will dress them from 12,000 different knowledges and they're lucky if at least one of their realities will begin to appear on this earth. Just one of the haqqaiqs to come out. So imagine then all these realities that they're teaching. All of the realities of tafakkur, all of the realities of muraqabah, all of the realities of lataif al qalb, all of the realities of ilm huruf and the knowledge of numbers, all of these realities from Naqshbandiya, the depth of the Naqshbandiya realities and the dress of Ahlul Bayt, all of those if they're not taught these 11 principles don't activate. We pray that Allah address us and bless us from their reality and the immensity of their reality and that their fires and their lights to dress us, bless us and Allah to complete His Divinely favours upon our souls, those whom watching, those whom supporting, those whom are active, inshaAllah Allah dress them and bless them. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa. وبصير سورة الفاتحة